Welcome to the second video on using the Denford lathe in Nottingham Hackspace. In this video we're going to go over powering on the lathe, setting up the tools and using it in a short job. So here's the Denford lathe, on the left is the computer that controls it with its monitor and below the lathe is the main lathe control unit. That's connected to the lathe by a cable which goes around the right hand edge. So the first piece is to power on. First we power on the PC, then we switch on the daylight controller. At that point the PC should have booted, we need to log in to Windows. We log in as administrator with no password. This is actually written on top of the computer, you forget. Once we're logged into the computer, we start the VR turning app. This is the app which controls the milling machine, the, the lathe. Once the application is loaded, the first thing we have to do is select the live machine. And then, before we do anything else, we need to home it. Click the home both button. The lathe will move into the home position and then stop moving. Right, so the next piece is to set it up. There's a number of things that we have to get right in order to make the system work. We have to set up the lathe units to make sure we're in inches or millimetres. It's a very bad mistake to use inches when your toolpath is in millimetres as everything will move 25 times as fast and 25 times as far which usually ends up with the lathe hitting something. We then need to set up the tool table and the important piece here is that the tools in Mac, the, t the tools match between the CAM the F the Fusion 360 and the tools that the Denford has set up in its tool table and of course the tools that are actually in the carousel. So once we have all them three right we just we can double check them uh, by running a, the program on the simulator to make sure it doesn't do anything that looks really strange. So part one is to check that the tools we want for our job are actually in the tool carousel. The tool carousel has got eight slots, four are used for normal cutting tools and four are used for drills and boring jobs which are not using this thing. Here we're going to be using tool one as the rough cut, tool three is the threading tool, we're not using that, tool five is the fine finishing tool and finally tool seven is the parting tool. So it looks like all our tools are correct in the carousel. Now we just need to set up the actual tool offsets. Tool 1 is the master tool and should have offsets of 0 with a machine offset correct to bring that to position. position. First thing we do is mount our stock and then we do the setting up the tool one or two ways. One way is to jog the tool under the end of the stock. The other way, which I find slightly easier, <coughs> is simply move the stock to the end of the tool with the tool in position 0. We then take a very short facing cut, a uh, very short diameter cut on the machine using the jogging tools. Again, there's two ways to set the X dimension. One is to take a very fine cut, measure the diameter and enter the measured diameter into the tool table. The other is to measure the diameter, then jog the tool up to the workpiece and use the measured diameter. Taking a test cut, and using the position of the test cut and measuring the, the cut diameter is a more accurate method. So that's our test cut taken. Notice that we don't move the X after taking the test cut. We can just move the Z away to um, clear the, the toolpath, but we must move the X because we're going to use that X position to set it to the measured position in the software. We measure the diameter of our bar. Micrometer is probably over the top for making our 
mini top, but it's the accuracy is quite good on the Denford, so it's worth doing things. Right, so we've got we set the work in the stock, we've set to zero on the Z, and we know the diameter of the expedition. We've got the expedition set. Now we've just got to tell the software about that. So to do that, we go into the software, we set tool one, use the tool changer to move to this tool one. We check that the tool offsets are zero. This is the master tool, so the tool offsets are zero. Just looking through the other tools to make sure that they're all the expected tools in the right places. All the tools are as expected in the right slot. So we move back to tool one. Tools two one offset to zero. We now bring up the offset button. Use the offset button on the bottom left to bring up the machine offsets. And set the machine offsets to zero for Z and our measured diameter for the X diameter. Once we've done this, the DRO readings should read Z0 and X are measured tool diameter. It's 14.98, slightly under the 50 millimeter bar. So that's our mass tool set up correctly. So, so far we've checked that all the tools are in the right places. The tools table in the Denford software is correctly um, knowledgeable about the tools. And we've set tool zero offset to zero with the work offsets set so the tool tip is in the correct position relative to the work. Next we've got set the offsets for the other tools. We'll do this by positioning the tool, in this case, tool five, our finishing tool. We set it to the known position, Z0, and the diameter set to the workspace diameter, which was 14.98 millimeters. Once we've got the tool in the correct place, we go into the software, select tool 5. And this is us just jumping it into the right place in the software. We then use the tool offsets, rather than the work offsets, to set the position of this tool. Because this is the tool offsets, it won't affect the work offsets or the master offsets. So we set X to the diameter and Z to zero. So that's tool, that's our tool five finishing tool set up. We go through all the other tools doing exactly the same thing. Once we've done that, we're finally ready to make a part. At this point, the plan was to run the tool path for the mini top which I've generated in Fusion 360 in the last thing. Unfortunately a glitch in my USB stick meant that the mini top tool path wasn't available to me in the space. So I just quickly wrote a four or five line G-code script to machine a little bit of the end of the bar. And this is it 